Welcome to Drawing from Nature. Today we're going to draw the emperor penguin and learn about their harrowing lives. We're also going to discover many things that surprise a lot of people about these animals. For example, many people are shocked when they find out how tall these animals are and amazed when they find out how deep they can dive. If you'd like to find out any of those facts about them or just draw along with me today, stick around while we draw from nature. Emperor penguins are part of a group of animals known as flightless birds. And as the name suggests, they are birds which cannot fly, but what they lack in the ability to fly through the air, they make up for with their ability to really beautifully and elegantly swim through the water. But I think what's most interesting really about penguins and particularly emperor penguins is their lifestyle. Every year in the life of these animals is a harrowing adventure and we're going to talk a lot about that while we're drawing our animal today. But before we begin let's talk about some of the tools that we're going to be using. As you can see in front of me I have a large sheet of paper. Your piece of paper doesn't have to be large. It can be any size. We're going to talk about how to make sure that we can scale your image so that it fits on whatever piece of paper you might be drawing. The drawing implements that we're going to be using today or I'm going to be using are crayons. I have a black crayon here. I have a brown crayon, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Now we're drawing a penguin and oftentimes people think of penguins as being strictly black and white animals, but they do have color. So we are going to be using some of these other, other colors as well. So the first step here is to figure out how to size our animal on our paper. Now, a lot of times people will think that Penguins are small animals. Oftentimes if you go to zoos, you might see a small penguin, but uh, emperor penguins are actually quite large. They grow to be four feet tall and they can uh, weigh somewhere between 50 and 90 pounds. So they're, they're actually quite a large animal. When you see them in a documentary or on television, there's oftentimes not a lot of things next to them for scale. They live in an environment where it is mostly snow and ice, maybe some rocks uh, during the summertime. You know, because of that, you, you oftentimes don't get a true sense of the scale of these animals, but they are, you know, four feet tall when they, they grow to their, their full mature size. So let's start figuring out where we're gonna put this four foot tall animal on our page. Penguins walk in an upright fashion. So we're gonna have our penguin here in the middle of our page. We don't want its head extending off. So I'm gonna draw a line somewhere up near the top here. And that's gonna be the top of our animal's head. And then I'm gonna draw a line just below it, somewhere in the center here. And that's gonna be the bottom of our animal's feet. These are uh, gonna be referred to as guidelines. These uh, lines are kinda uh, sort of uh, disappear into the rest of the drawing. So you don't have to worry whether they're uh, you know, exactly right. And I'm drawing mine just a little bit on the light side so that you can see them, but they're gonna disappear into our drawing later on. Now, a penguin has kind of an oval shaped body form. So what we're gonna do is divide up this space between the bottom of its feet and the top of its head in terms of what is gonna be feet, what is going to be body, and what's gonna be head. The body is gonna take up the vast majority of this space. In fact, uh, it is going to take up probably about the space between the bottom of the feet and right around here. So if we take this area and divide it in half and then take that area and divide that in half and then bite a little bit more up, that's about where our body's going to end. So let's make a little, a little line there. So we have head and body and the feet pretty much flow right in with the rest of the body. Now the oval shape that we mentioned is gonna be in this area. So let's start by creating that oval. I'm gonna extend this line a little bit wider here to kind of create the shoulders and the chest of this bird. Penguins are very uh, blubbery animals. They have a lot of insulation on them. They live exclusively in Antarctica. They don't live at the North Pole at all. They only live in the South Pole around Ant Antarctica. Uh, and th because they live in this really cold environment, they have to have a lot of adaptations. And one of them is they have a lot of fat on their body, which is referred to as blubber. So uh, the blubber uh, makes kind of a, a lump here at the top. So let's extend this line out like that. So top of the head, bottom of the feet, and the chest right there, okay? So now we're gonna do some curve lines down to here. But before that, let's make a little bit of a pad for their feet. Similarly to how we extended this line out, let's extend this line out as well. About like that, okay? So now I'm gonna draw the curve line, watch what I do, and then you can do it on your paper at home. We're gonna do 
a bit of a curve down like that and then we're going to straighten out to there. So we've got a bit of a curve at the top and then a little bit straighter going down. Now this is their chest. This is uh, their front where their blubber kind of puffs out. They also have feathers that kind of uh, puff out and make them a little bit uh, you know, larger looking than they otherwise would be. In fact, feathers are another adaptation that these animals have in order to keep them warm during the Antarctic winters, which can get down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. So it gets very, very cold. In addition to wind chills, these animals are very well adapted for that with their blubber and their feathers. And their feathers can be as dense as uh, two dozen feathers per square inch. A square inch is a square, and which has an inch uh, on either side of it, and they, they can fit 24 feathers tightly packed into that space. And the feathers trap air. They act like an insulating layer, like uh, the, uh, the, the foam, or you know, if you have perhaps a down jacket, you would actually have feathers in your jacket. Feathers can be a very effective insulator, and the uh, the emperor penguin uses them very effectively to stay warm. Now we're going to uh, work on their back side. Now the back side isn't exactly like their front. It doesn't have this, this bump out. It's going to be kind of a continuous arc all the way down here. I'll do it first and then you can uh, follow along on your sheet. Here we go. Just like that. Now you can see I made one line and I didn't really like the way that that line sucked in a little too much so I did another line. I pushed it out a little bit. That's the benefit of working with guidelines is if you don't like the way that the form is looking you can kind of push it around a little bit. Like let's say I want this, uh, this chest to puff out just a little more. Let's bring it out a little bit. That's the beauty of working with, with guidelines. You can get things looking the way you want and then, uh, and then you can work on making the darker lines. Alright, next let's work on the head up here. The head has a lot more curved lines, but the core of the head is kind of like an oval. Now this oval is facing upwards. Uh, the head oval is more of a horizontal oval here. And it's going to float right in this area right here. Just like that. Okay. Now the head has a neck where it connects to the body. It doesn't connect with just this little point here. So let's start working on that neck. Now this is the, the front. This is the chest. This is its chin in here. We're going to be drawing the beak over here in a moment. Let's do the back of the head over here. And the back of the head very gracefully flows right along into the back. So let's make that line. Just like that. Okay. Next, let's work on the beak. The beak is going to flow from the center of the face and it's going to come out to about this point. So if we take the entire width of the head, the beak is nearly as long as the entire head. Perhaps about three quarters of the length of the head goes into the beak. So I'm just going to put a little point right out there. This will be where, the, where we're aiming for to be the tip of the beak. Okay. We're going to start here and I'm going to do a curved line and what we're going to be drawing here is the mouth part of the beak where the top and bottom beak meet. So we're going to start here, we're going to curve up and then a little bit of a curve down, a little bit of a frown. So up and then down like that. I don't know whether the penguin is sad or not, but oftentimes they look that way. Certainly they have a right to be maybe a little bit upset given their environment. They live, like I said, in a very, very harsh environment. And one of the, the harshest parts of their yearly routine is their mating season. Now, their mating season starts in May when the males and the females pair up and it extends throughout the summer. And it's really a harrowing quest of protecting an egg that they have to both uh, share with each other. There are weeks and weeks on end where neither of the parents are able to eat and uh, we're going to get into more of that later, but it certainly would explain why our penguin might be a little bit, a little bit on the downside because they do live a, a very, very rough life. So uh, let's do the bottom part of the beak now. We're going to start from right around the, where this tip is here, but we're going to go back just a little bit. So if we have the whole beak, Perhaps about a quarter of the beak is a bit of an over, an overbite, if you will. And we're going to start here and make a curved line that's going to go right into this neck here. 
just like that. Okay, so we have the mouth, the bottom jaw, and now let's do the top jaw. Now there's a little bit of an interesting curve to the top jaw of the Emperor Penguin. And it, it's, it's almost in a couple little parts, so watch me as I do it. There's a front section where there's a little bit of a bump, and then there is another section up here that's getting more uh, close to their nose and nasal cavity. So let's do the first bump here. Just like that. Just a little curve. And then from about here, we're going to do another bump. Right there. And like I said, this is including kind of their nasal cavity, that area there. And now from here, we're going to curve up into this oval. Just like that. Okay. Already, you can see we're starting to get the feeling of having a penguin here on our sheet. How is yours, how is yours coming out? Is it fitting on the page properly? If there's anything about the shape that at this point you don't like, this is a great opportunity, like I said, with guidelines, to go and make some tweaks. If you don't feel like this pushes out enough, bring yours out a little bit more. If you feel like it pushes out too much, draw another line that'll come back uh, and uh, you know shrink it down a little bit. These are guidelines, and like I said, they're going to kind of disappear once we start doing the darker lines later on. If you feel good about how everything's looking, and it doesn't have to be perfect, nothing's ever perfect, and there's all sorts of different penguins. Some have bigger chests, some have smaller chests. You don't have to worry about it being perfectly ideal. Uh, let's jump down to the feet. If we are feeling good about this, I'm feeling good about this. Uh, the feet are very much hidden under their body, but we do see the claws coming out the front here, okay? So what we're gonna do, there's a little bump of blubber here. So watch this, I'm gonna make a little lump right there like that, okay? And now we're gonna make some claws coming out. The tips of the claws are gonna be right here. And these are, these are some pretty severe looking claws. <laughs> now, uh, uh, penguins uh, are a predator animal. They go and they, you know, they hunt food in the water. They get all their food from the water. They're not hunting food on the land. Uh, they don't, however, attack with their claws, though these claws do look very aggressive. They are biting things in their mouth. The types of animals that penguins are eating are things like shrimp and squid and fish. That's what they're hunting. And they're also hunted by other animals, though they don't have very many predators. Uh, most of the predators uh, that are down in Antarctica that are hunting emperor penguins would be something like a leopard seal or an orca. An orca is also known as a killer whale. All right, so let's do some of these severe claws, which are not used to attack. Top of the claw, and let's do the bottom. Right, just like that, okay? And we're gonna do another claw kind of behind it. So we're gonna make the tip right there, and let's bring one of those claws up, just like that. And I think this claw we might see just behind that claw, just kind of like that. Okay, so we got a, a hint of the claws down there. Now. Uh, Penguins do have a little bit of a tail. It's not much to talk about, but it is there, and uh, we're gonna include it here. The tail sticks out a little bit in the back, so I'm gonna take this line, extend it to about here, just like that, and we're gonna do a little bit of a curve right there. A little bit of a curve, like that. And with that, we have the basic form of a penguin, with one exception, there's one thing missing. What's missing? Their wings, they have wings here. Now they don't fly with their wings, but the wings are used uh, very heavily when they are swimming. The wings are what they use to propel themselves around and their feet and tail are what they use to steer as they're going through the water. Now, penguins are not particularly fast swimmers. They're, they're not shooting through the water like a torpedo. Their top speed is somewhere between three and five miles an hour, but they are very, very maneuverable and that's how they catch their prey. So let's work on this this wing here, and the wing is going to attach to the penguin somewhere right around this area. So if you take your penguin's entire body and divide that in half, and we're gonna divide that in half again up here, and that's about where the, the wing is gonna attach, just a little down from there though. So cut it all in half, cut the top in half, and then just come down a little bit from there. And let's draw just a little circle, and that is gonna be its shoulder where the wing attaches. Now the wing has a bit of a curve forward, and the tip is gonna be somewhere right around, right around here, okay? I'm gonna draw a little line for the tip, 
Okay, so we're going to do a curved line from the top to the bottom, but it's not curved the whole way down. It starts off kind of straight, like that, and then there's a bulge out and a curve back. Okay, so it's a little straight, then we bulge out, and then we curve to the wingtip right there. And it's similar on the back side. It's going to go out a little bit like that. And then there's kind of an angle right here where it starts turning around. And then it comes down to the tip like that. Okay. So next, let's start creating the uh, zones of color here on this animal. Uh, penguins, like we know, are generally mostly black and white. This animal is going to have some other color and we're going to include those other colors in here. But first, let's start uh, demarcating what are going to be the black areas and what are going to be the white areas. Now, the entirety of this wing is going to be black and the black is going to extend all across the back, all through here. And the only part of the body that is not going to be black is this belly area. So let's draw some lines to uh, segregate out what's going to be white and what's going to be black here. So the line starts right under the wingtip here. It does a little bit of a curve back like that, a little bit of a curve forward, and then like that. So we curve back, forward, and then like that. Okay? Uh, the black line continues up underneath the wing and it emerges right around here. And this line here is going to join a curved line that we're going to create right up here. So the chest up here is going to be white. And between here and here, we're going to connect these two lines. Just like that. Okay, so white chest, black back. Now the penguin does have a bit of a spot right here, kind of a white spot. And it's coming from the neck area and it flows around like this. And then there's a curve like that. And then it comes forward again. Okay. So it's a curve around, a curve up, and then forward like that. Okay. So now let's start darkening up some of these lines so that we really mean them, all right? And why don't we start with the chest here. Now, the feathers on the penguin are quite smooth. They're smooth so that they can cut through the water. Uh, so we're gonna do smooth lines here to suggest smooth feathers. Like I said, penguins are very strong swimmers and they are very effective divers. They can hold their breath for up to 18 minutes underwater. And while they're doing that, they can dive to almost 900 feet below the surface while they're going after their prey. So they're very effective divers. Uh, what helps them with that is the fact that their bones are not air filled like many birds. Many birds that fly have uh, very thin light, uh, light bones that are oftentimes filled with air pockets. That allows them to just be lighter so that they can move through the air easier. Penguins are not like that. They have heavier bones and that allows them to sink and swim through the water without uh, constantly having to fight against going back up to the surface. And uh, because of that, they can dive to, like I said, enormous depths, almost 900 feet and almost 20 minutes under the water. So you see how we've got this nice smooth line across the chest here. Let's do the same from the top of the head all the way to the tail, all right? We're gonna do a nice dark line. Really mean it. This is the opportunity that you have to decide which of the guidelines you're gonna to commit to. You can go to the, the tail there, all right? And then we can bring this line straight along up to those toes there. We'll do the same across the head, top of the head, into the lines over the, the beak, coming around to the front of the beak, that frown mouth there, and now the bottom chin tucking right in there. We'll do the same for the wing right here, darkening up these lines like we mean them. All right, there we go. 
There's a couple sections of color, and I think it would be good at this point to get those sections of color in before we start putting any more black in, so that the color can kind of claim its territory. Now, uh, the Emperor Penguin, like I said, does have color. I'm going to put down the black, and I'm going to pick up next an orange crayon. We're going to be using orange, and eventually yellow, and we're going to be using red. But we're going to start with the orange crayon because it's kind of between the two colors because red and yellow uh, together mixed will form orange and we're going to be doing so, uh, what's called gradients where we're kind of changing from one color into another color. It can be a really beautiful effect in images. So first we're going to start right in this area here. This is going to be kind of an orangey uh, section and it, st it starts orange up in this area and then it gets lighter as it goes across here. It turns a little yellow and then goes to white. So let's start with the orange here. So don't color too, too hard because we're going to want to color over this with red later on. I'm just going to color just on this side of that patch like that. Okay? And now I'm going to fade it out a little bit on this side. So a little bit of orange but getting lighter and lighter and lighter and then you can hardly see it anymore. So a little darker on this side and getting lighter as you go across that way. We're going to do a similar thing on the chest here. It's going to be darker at the top and then it's going to start fading down as we go down. So let's start with some dark orange here and then getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And the way that you get lighter and lighter and lighter is just by pushing. Pushing uh, down not as hard with your crayon. So the less, the less you push, the less wax comes off the crayon. There's one other place where we want to put some orange and that is just on the, the top beak here. So we're going to put just a little splash of orange right over here. Okay. And now we're done with the orange. So we can put down the orange. And why don't we jump to the yellow now. We're going to use the yellow in this area and then in this area in a very similar way. We're going to color over the orange that we already did. Give a little sense of that yellow in there. All the way down through the, oop, I broke my crayon, no worries. <laughs> Pushing down too hard, trying to get too much yellow on there, okay. Going lighter and lighter and lighter, and in this yellow we can extend a little bit beyond where the orange had extended. Down to there a little bit. So it extends just a little bit, a little bit more. And we're going to do the same up here, where the yellow extends into this white area a little bit. So we just get a little hint of white remaining there, yellow is pretty much everywhere, and then it fades into orange. How's yours coming out? You ready to move on? Next we're going to use that red crayon that I mentioned, and the red is going to be up in this area and then over here. Let's start it in this area here. We're going to be uh, working on an area just in the front here, a little, a little curve of red. Just right up through here. And yours doesn't have to be exactly the way mine is. Like I said, penguins have all sorts of different markings. Not, not any two penguins I'm sure are exactly alike, so if yours is a little different, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So here we have red, turning into orange, turning into yellow, turning into white. That's a gradient, and that's a really beautiful uh, aspect to lots of drawings, is having gradients in there. Let's put a little bit of red in this section here. Mixing the red with the orange, make this kind of a, a reddish orange, just like that. And we're done with these colors. Now we're going to come back a little bit later with just a little bit more color to cr uh, create some sense of shadows in our image. But with the exception of the shadows, the rest of our drawing is all going to be black and white, the way people oftentimes think of penguins. So let's begin up here with our black starting up by the face. And we're going to work on the head first. And we're, when you're working with your, uh, with your crayon, uh, don't feel like you have to blacken it in so that you don't see any paper anymore. We're going to go over, we're going to give it kind of a sense of black, and then we're going to come back and we're going to uh, do some shading and leave some highlights. So watch me first, and then you can jump on yours. But don't feel like we're going to, don't push down so hard that you don't leave any paper left, because then that eliminates all of your opportunity to, to add anything later. So you can see I'm going over this, and there's still a sense of, of paper through there. We're going to come back later. 
So try to get yours to be about, about this dark. I'm trying to make sure I keep that, that orange section in there. So work on it being about this dark. I'm going to come down to the chin here and then stop right there and then go across the face. And as I'm coloring, I'm noticing we never drew an eye. <laughs> the eye is black, but we should draw it in here. We'll, we'll come back and we'll do that later. All right, so we're giving it our first pass. And you'll notice that the direction of the strokes of my crayon are in the direction that the feathers grow. And that gives a sense of texture. So instead of just going any direction, I'm making my strokes move in the direction of the feathers. And the feathers start from the front and they move to the back and that helps them with their ability to swim and cut through the water. If the feathers all went backwards and were all up this way, when it tried to swim through the water, all the feathers would puff out and they'd act like parachutes. So they, they go in this direction, allow them to cut through the water. Now I keep alluding to this harrowing life cycle that the penguins have, which begins uh, when they are moving into their mating season. Uh, the mating season begins in March when they find a mate and they mate with another penguin. And then somewhere around May or June, uh, an egg is hatched. And as soon as the egg is hatched, the penguins split up where the male and the female had been together. And the female who just laid the egg will head back to the ocean. Now they are not able to do their nesting right next to where the ocean is because the ice that they have to nest on is gonna melt. So they need to uh, create their nesting areas, which are called rookeries, uh, many miles inland, because it, if they were to have their eggs any closer to the ocean, once it moves into the summer season and the ice gets thin, they'd be in big trouble. So the females have to go many, many miles and they are gone for over a month, somewhere around a month and a half. They're headed back to uh, the ocean. The females will finally get to eat and uh, then they will return, like I said, after a month or a month and a half. And that entire time, the males were taking care of the egg, the way that they do take care of the egg because they aren't able to create a nest, there aren't any nesting materials in Antarctica, is that they have the egg rest on their feet. The, there's a little uh, indentation on top of their feet. The egg will sit in there on top of that indentation and their stomach will extend that blubbery coating up over the egg to create kind of a, a nest out of their own body. And like I said, for over a month, the males sit there in the incredibly cold temperatures, waiting for the females to come back uh, so that they can trade off the egg and, and then the males can go and they can get some food. And it's a, it's a very, very difficult lifestyle because it's in such a harsh environment. And uh, every year for a penguin is just an amazing adventure. And they don't, they don't all survive it. Uh, like I said, there are lots of dangers, winter and cold being one of them. But in addition to that, there are the other predators. There's the leopard seals and there are the, uh, the orca when they are under the water hunting their own food. Uh, but when they're young, they have a whole other set of uh, dangers that they have to watch out for. And uh, the young have to watch out for an animal called a giant petrel. And giant petrels are very dangerous to the young. In fact, uh, one out of every three uh, baby young penguins, uh, uh, emperor penguins that are born, become the meal of a giant petrel, which is good for the giant petrels. They need, they need food to survive, but not so good for the, the emperor penguin young. All right. How is your shading coming out? Were you able to get your entire area colored in? The only other area we want to make sure we get is the claws. You can go pretty dark with those claws there. Just like that. And now, like I said, we should go back and get their eye. Their eye is just about in this area. Right here, in this sea of black, between the, ba the back of this, uh, this uh, orange section and that orange section, there's an eye right there. And we're gonna draw a circle to note that eye. 
I did it uh, kind of dark and I'm going to darken one half of that circle and leave one half of it with a little bit of a highlight in there. So it looks like there's a little gleam to the eye there. All right, the next thing we want to do is add a little bit more dark into some of these areas. Uh, and the way I think would be nice to do that, to introduce a little bit more uh, richness and depth into uh, this drawing, is to use some blue. I'm going to take a blue crayon and peel back a little bit of the paper. And we're going to use blue to try to darken up some of this and just give it a little bit uh, more feeling of richness. So why don't we start on the bottom jaw here and darkening that up a little bit. Just like that. So we're going to go over the entire area with the blue with the exception of a couple of highlight areas. Why don't we leave a little bit on the top of the head without the blue. We'll just kind of march right up to it. Just like that. And a little bit along the back. We'll leave a little bit lighter as well. Blue is a nice color to use when you want to suggest shadows and things because, well, oftentimes we think of shadows as just being an absence of light, which means that they should be dark. And if they're dark, then they, of course, should be black. If you think about it, all of these shadow areas, which are not getting hit by sunlight, are usually still able to get some light from the sky, the sky being blue much of the time. And uh, oftentimes it can make for more interesting shadows if instead of doing them with black, you do them with kind of a mixture of blues and maybe some blacks, maybe even putting some purple in there. And as you can see, just adding a little bit of blue into this black really livens it up, makes it just jump off the page a lot more, I think, than it would if you just had just black and white. And in, as far as realism goes, like I said, there's lots of blue in nature, and that blue sky you know, can reflect off of, uh, off of their bodies, and certainly the color blue can be present in all sorts of environments. All right. Almost all the way down. all the way to the bottom and that tail in there. I'll put a little bit of blue in the claws too. Maybe leave the top of them a little bit lighter, but blue on the bottom. Just like that. And the last pass I would see us doing is just a little bit more black in some of the more shadowy areas. Like the, maybe there's a more shadowy area underneath this, this uh, front wing. So I'm going to really darken up under that wing. Really pushing down now, like that. And let's extend that across our sheet a little bit. There we go. I hope you didn't borrow a black crayon from somebody, <laughs> because you're not going to have much to give back to them after this drawing. As you can see, I'm still trying to work in the direction of those feathers growth. From the top to the bottom. Make it nice and dark down here. That's where all the shadows are. Nice and dark through here. Going to come up over through this area. And just leaving that backside a little bit lighter. The sun's baking this penguin from the backside there. And come up over the, the head, still leaving a little bit of lightness up through there. I don't want to totally uh, obscure this eye. I want to keep a sense that that eye is there. So I don't want to go too, too dark around the eye itself. Just so we can keep a sense that there's an eye there. Let's work a little bit on this shoulder. Darken that up. And let's do the front edge of this flipper, but leave the back edge a little bit lighter. That'll do a couple of things. That will give a sense of uh, modeling, of uh, curvature to it, so there's maybe a highlight 
along that back edge, and it'll also differentiate between the flipper and the body, uh, so that we can you know, appreciate that there is a flipper there, and it won't just get hidden in a sea of black. So coming along the front edge here, just like that. So you can see we, we're leaving a little bit of lightness there, and there's nothing wrong with that. It gives you a sense of what's there. All right, I think I'm just gonna darken up a little bit around the bill, the beak here. Get that nice and dark up through here. Maybe a little bit more on the bottom. And I think I'm gonna reinforce this mouth line a little, just showing that it comes back to here. There we go. And showing his expression of his difficult, difficult life. The one last thing I think would be nice to do is create just a sense of the environment that this penguin is in. As we mentioned, they live exclusively in the Antarctic and What's in the Antarctic is oftentimes a lot of snow. So let's create a little bit of a snow shadow under here. I'm gonna use the blue crayon and make a nice soft blob around this, this penguin. Just a little bit in front of it, like that, and a little bit behind it. Maybe it's just sitting there reflecting on its, its harsh life. An emperor penguin's life, uh, incidentally, uh, can last for about 20 years. They live to be about, about 20 years old. All right, so we got a little bit of sense of the, the blue shadows in the snow. And if you'd like with me, why don't we experiment just a little bit with purple. I'm not going to put purple over the whole area, but maybe just a little purple just immediately around the penguin, just to really reinforce the idea that there's a shadow there. You can see I'm just going to do kind of a soft, blob of purple around this guy. Just like that. All right, and there you go, the Emperor Penguin. One of the most interesting animals on the planet, I think, in terms of their life cycle and the fact that every year in these animals' lives is an adventure. I hope you had fun drawing along with me today and I hope you're pleased with your drawing. And I also hope you'll join me next time when we draw from nature.